for truth please hit that subscribe button because we are just getting started on your presentation where we saw examples of giant animals in the past including the megalodon um, which i find fascinating and also devolution you talked about what about this specific question uh, from honesty angel thanks so much uh, for the question in the chat what would cause everything to be so smaller now um, or larger say before the flood with some of these giants Okay, uh, probably several ways of coming at this. If we look at human beings and look at the way we grow, we grow pretty fast, um, you know, when we're little kids and then we start to slow down and then we stop. That's growing vertically. After that, most of us grow this way, right? Uh, we're done growing usually by the time we're 15, 16. Some people still marginally growing by 21, but it, it's, it's, it's a fairly static process from then on in. Uh, what affects our size? Well, number one, we have a built-in growth clock. Number two, it's dependent on actual, um, you know, food sources. So that I'm old enough to remember when the Vietnamese, after the Vietnamese War, came to Australia. They'd grown up on low-protein diets. They came to Australia. They were diminutive. Grandma and Grandpa are still diminutive, but little Johnny's up there with me, right? He's had high quality protein like McDonald's, right? And, and seriously, many of our fast food places are much higher quality food than they would have grown up with, uh, particularly if you leave out Agent Orange and things like that. So you will find that the diet affects the size you can reach. But built into human beings is a growth clock. If your growth clock busts, two things can happen. One is you can end up as a pygmy. So their clock turns off when they're 10. So from then on, they will not grow vertically um, unless someone can fix their growth clock hormones. The other end is where it doesn't turn off and you'll find you end up being impressive like Andre the Giant, but you are dead by the time you're 35 to 45. And usually you are sterile. Um, your body begins to defeat itself. So in the present world, we know that deformities make humans giants and deformities make humans pygmies. And the rest of us, the size we can reach is governed by quality of environment uh, and our inbuilt clock. Now, we're quite different from crocodiles. Um, I live in a country where there are crocodiles. You find fossil crocodiles in Canada. You find them in England. And many of them are mega size compared to the present day. Here's what we know about living crocodiles. Number one, they never stop growing as long as they live. They grow pretty fast for the first 25 years of their life. When they reach maturity, they slow down, but they don't stop. They keep growing every day of their life. The older they get, the bigger they are. In our world, they live to be about 100, get to be five or six metres, and they drop dead. All right, now, we've got a fossil display with a, a crocodile that's nearly 30 metres long. That's, uh, for those of you not yet metric over there in the States, that, that's a big crocodile. You know, so you're looking at creatures that are as big as our our greatest white shark model, you know, the megalodon. Uh, so you'll find that these used to be huge, like the giant dinosaurs. So what do we know about other animals? If you don't stop growing as long as you live, if you live in a world where the quality of the environment, the food, the temperature, etc., is ideal, then you will keep growing every day of your life. You can end up, well, think carefully, the world before Noah's flood, no summer, no winter. That all comes after Noah's flood. Don't make the assumption now is like it always used to be. 
now is a degenerate perversion. Climate change started at Noah's day. You're too late if you've only just caught up with it. And it's ruined food supply. It's ruined the quantity of radiation you need to optimize your growth. Before Noah's flood, if Methuselah lived to be nearly a thousand, so did Methuselah croc. And they could be monsters. Aren't you glad they started out being vegetarian? <laughs> I tell you what, what you've got is a world in which the crocodiles no longer live as long. The sharks don't even live as long and they do, be they do better than most people because the creatures in the sea, many of them still have moderate length lifespans, you know, 300, 400 years. They can continue growing a lot longer than us on the land who are really beat about by the changing environment. The stresses on the land, whether it comes from the Arctic ice or the, the, the Sahara Desert, are much greater range than anything you'll find in the sea at all. So that's your first clue, environment. Uh, your second clue, food. Your third clue, lifespan. Uh, your fourth clue comes from the fact that after Noah's flood, God told Noah he was free to eat meat. Now, I'm sure that was a conscience-rending uh, challenge from God because Noah had never touched meat in his life from what we can gather. And yet God gave him permission to eat meat. He didn't say he had to, but he gave him permission. And I can see why. You come to Australia, you live in the desert, there's nothing to eat except a kangaroo. Uh, so you have one of those killing sticks and knock it on the head. Um, the kangaroo has hopped around finding bits of grass here and there. So you eat the kangaroo. Not a conscience issue these days for most of us. So you will find that in a world where food is challenged and the environment has gone downhill, you end up with creatures that have also started to eat each other. And the one thing I've learned about creatures that are being eaten, it affects their lifespan. You got yes. it? <laughs> yeah, it really yeah. does. And it affects your lifespan. It affects how big you can grow, which means one other factor, natural selection, which is very real. And we knew about long before Charles Darwin is also very real. And neither you nor I, I mean, look at the hunting programs. Look at this big eight point buck I found, right? And look at the size of this fish I caught. We don't go for the little ones. We want the big ones. <laughs> we naturally select against the big ones, meaning we only leave the little ones alive. So we have been part of reducing the size of all of these creatures because we have taken up hunting and we've gotten better and better at it. We've invented savager and savager weapons to take them out real fast. And so they're not there. The big ones are gone. I mean, if, if you're only a little pygmy and you survive, then you're already going to have little kids anyway. And so that's what we've got. So all of those things are affecting the question about what made us bigger before the flood, what makes it smaller after that, or one last feature. Remember the point I made about man being sterile? Right, right. Um, think of Adam and Eve, absolutely fertile, heaps of kids. By the time you get to Noah, Noah's grandkids are starting to run over the planet. You have Babel. Then they end up in the land of milk and honey. And there are some big people. There's Goliath, etc. Okay, now did you know Goliath's children had six fingers and six toes? Oh, no, I've only got five. You see, they were degenerate. Right. But they were right. big. But the grapes at the time were beautiful. That's why the Bible describes the land as flowing with milk and honey. It's not just sticky, gooey, smelly, sweet stuff, right? It, it's just abundant in its provision. Now, Goliath had a Mrs. Goliath and they had children. They weren't sterile. Today's giants are sterile. There'll never again be another race of giants. So there's another complicating factor uh, that you can build into all of this. So there's lots John, more. John, you, yep. What, one, what, one, of the, one, one of the good, one of the good, 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 good points um, about what you're saying is just recently I remember reading an article about the elephants and the tusks. The evolutionists said, oh, look, the elephants are evolving into... Um, tuskless or smaller tusks. No, it's because all these poachers have been killing the elephants with the big tusks, removing that gene pool from, from that uh, species. So all we're getting now is elephants with small tusks. There's yeah. no doubt about that. The hunting factor, whether it's us or whether it's other animals. I mean, the old Darwin idea that, you know, the removal of the weak, the survival of the fittest, any lion doesn't want to eat a weak old donkey. I mean, they taste terrible. They're not good for you. 
So in reality, they go for the strong young ones. So natural selection eliminates the healthy guys, not the unhealthy ones. So yeah, good point. Well, that was a really uh, great response, Dr. McKay. Um, you're like a, a walking encyclopedia. It's as if you've answered that question before. So many good points there. Yeah, I've had a few of them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's awesome. So a good question.